What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender architectural modeling tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna continue our series on modeling exterior building elements by learning how to model a window inside of Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we're gonna model this. We're gonna start off in the same way that we started off at the door last week, where we're gonna import a reference image to model from. And so one thing you need to remember is you need to go into edit and you need to make sure that you have enabled the import images as planes add-on. That's gonna allow you to import this image as a flat plane that we can then model on top of. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete out my default dog. Actually, I'm gonna leave the default dog for a second because she's good for a size reference. So first thing we're gonna do, and again, this will only show up if you have that add-on enabled. So we're gonna go to File, Import, and we're gonna do import images as planes. And so when we do that, we wanna go find our image. So for me, this is called window image. You can just Google a window for pulling this up. So there's tons of images out there, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring this one in. Notice how the first thing that happens is this is not oriented towards the camera. So we're just gonna rotate this. We're gonna do R, Y, 90, R, X, 90. So then our window is facing the proper direction. So I'm gonna move this up right here. And the size looks to be about right. So we can go ahead and delete out our default model. And so again, you might approach this a little bit differently if you were trying to be like super spot on accurate. I'm just trying to model a window with real geometry that I can quickly place inside of a wall. You could also use this texture in order to just kind of texture the image and just do some quick insets too. We're gonna to be a little more in depth than that, but we're not gonna be making like detailed shop drawings or anything, so it doesn't have to be perfect. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a plane. So I'm gonna do a Shift A, Mesh, Plane, and I'm gonna select the option for Align with View, and then I'm just gonna move this up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tab into Edit Mode, and I'm gonna select these edges, and I'm gonna move them so that they align with my window image. And basically, we're just gonna recreate all of the geometry contained inside of this image. So I'm gonna move this down, Move this over, and I'll move this over. So what that gives us is that gives us a single face in here. Well, now what I wanna do is I wanna inset this. So I'm just gonna type the three, or I'm gonna make sure I'm in edit mode, then I'm gonna type three to go to face select mode. Then I'm gonna inset this so that it aligns with uh, the outside of the frame right here. So I'm gonna inset this in, and I'm going to click. Then I'm gonna hit X, to delete out this face because all I want right now is I just want this piece that's gonna be on the outside of the window. So then I'm gonna type the A key to select it all and we're gonna duplicate this. So we're just gonna do a Shift D and we're gonna type the X key in order to move this along the X axis. Notice how what I'm getting here is I'm getting a duplicated version of this frame. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna say that this is maybe, we'll call it three inches thick. I'm not really sure, maybe we'll call it two inches thick. So we're just gonna move this two inches. So now we're gonna have a two inch thick window. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the bridge edge loops function in order to fill this in. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type the two key on my keyboard, and then I'm just gonna do an alt click in order to select this edge loop. Then I'm gonna move over here, I'm gonna do an alt shift click, so that I can have this edge loop as well. So now I have these two edge loops selected. I can go into edge and click on the button for bridge edge loops. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the perimeter. And so that has given us our window frame. So that gives us our overall window frame. Now, if we look at this, what this contains is this contains a little bit more detail. So we're gonna look at this whole thing. And so now we kind of have to make a decision on how detailed we wanna get with this, right? Because right now we could come in here and you can see how there's a lot of ins and outs. There's a little retainer in here for the slider, other things like that. I'm not gonna model to that level of detail just because I don't need that level of detail, right? Like I'm just creating a window that's gonna go in a wall that needs to look somewhat realistic, right? So all I really wanna do is I just wanna add this frame right here and some glass and then this frame right here and some glass. And so the way that we wanna do this is, first of all, I'm gonna use snapping 
in this case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tab into this object and I'm just going to create an edge loop right here. So in order to do that, I've just tabbed into this object and I'm just going to type control R. I'm going to click and I'm going to right click. And so what that's going to do is that's going to create an edge loop right at the center of this window. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that for snapping to make sure I'm modeling this to the proper size. But now I'm going to tab back into object mode. I'm just going to do a shift A. I'm going to add a new plane. And we're just going to do the whole thing over again. So front view, align view. And then one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn on vertex snapping. So you can click on this drop down right here, click on vertex, and then make sure that this magnet has been enabled. So now, I can tab into edit mode. I can just do the same thing I did before. So I can move this up, except notice how now I can snap to these edges. So that allows me to really precisely place these edges so that I know that they're aligned with the inside of my frame. And notice how now I have a snap point right here because I split this window frame in half. And so now what I can do is I can inset this. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to inset this from the perimeter. So I'm going to type the three key, click on my keyboard, and then I'm going to type I and move my mouse in. So I'll move my mouse in to something like this point right here. And so what that's done is that's allowed us to create the exterior frame on this window. And so now what I want to do is I'm going to start adding some edge loops. So I'm just going to do a control R in order to add an edge loop, I'm gonna move that over here. I'm gonna create another edge loop. I'm gonna put it right here. And basically what I'm doing is I'm just using this to rough out where these vertical and horizontal pieces are going to go. And so I'm not too worried about these around the edge right here because we're really not going to do too much with the edges, right? The only thing we're really going to do is we're going to extrude or we're going to, we're going to create a piece of glass in a second. So I'm just going to do a shift click. I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to select all of these. and I'm going to delete out the faces. So what that's allowed me to do is that's allowed me to create this frame. So now tap the A key to select all of the faces. And so in this case, because I have all of these selected, I'm just going to extrude these. So I'm just going to tap the E key. So instead of doing the bridge edge loops on this one, I'm just gonna extrude this back. And just to double check, if I turn off my window image, this does appear to have left a face in here. So we should be good. And you can kind of adjust this by tapping the G key and moving this along the X axis. So if you wanna make it thicker or less thick, you can move that in and out. And so what we've done is we've created our first window pane. Well, now I'm going to add a plane on the inside of it that our glass is going to be applied to. So we're just going to do a shift A and let's go to our front view. We'll do a shift A mesh plane, align view, and we'll just move that up. We'll do the same thing we did before where we're just going to select, start selecting our edges and just moving them until they're placed in the proper location. Then once we've done that, we can select the face. And we can move it along the X axis. And then what we'll do is we'll apply a glass material to this. One other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this, uh, this frame and this glass back. So I'm going to tab back into object mode. I'm going to do a shift click and I'm just going to move these back a little bit so that we've got a little bit of a recess on our glass right here. Well, then all we have to do is just duplicate this. So I'm going to do a shift D and duplicate it. And I'm going to move it down. And you may have to kind of jump around on this just a little bit, but I'm going to move this so that it aligns with this point. I'm going to move it along the X axis like this. until this is aligned. So what that's given us is that's given us our window. So then I'm just going to apply a glass material to it. All right. So one other thing is when you're setting up your glass material, I'm just going to link 
to a page on the Blender documentation where they talk about a good glass setup. So it's a node setup that you can actually set up in order to create your glass material. So um, that's what we're gonna be using in this case. Um, I don't wanna get too far into it. It's fairly complex, but basically what it does is it uses a glass BSDF when viewed directly and a transparent when viewed indirectly. And what it's supposed to do is reduce the noise in your renderings. So I will link to this page so that you can set up this material um, to apply to your window. And like I said, if you want to get more in depth on this in a future video, we can do that. But for now, just create this setup and that's what we're gonna use for our glass. I'm just gonna drag that over. If you guys are interested, I've been using this really cool app called Connector in order to store all of my materials and my model files. So if you're interested in that, I can do a video on that as well. Leave a comment down below. Let me know if that's something you'd like to see. And so let's go ahead and let's add a mesh right here. Switch over to rendered view. We're gonna drop this into cycles. We're just gonna do a shift A and we'll just add a point light for right now. And so if you look, we have a very simple window that we could then couple with a Boolean cutter object in order to cut a hole in a wall. So we can add a window to our models really easily using this method. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? How are you modeling your windows inside of Blender? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Blender content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.